And then we will, we will start here. Uh, welcome to the Muddy Mastermind. This is the August 2021 session. Today, we are going to talk about uh, onboarding and our um, second uh, in the uh, Calm Guide to Onboarding. I moved my, my buttons and now I have to go over and look at it. Where it is at? The Calm Guide to Onboarding, we're in section two, um, connecting your members and sparking conversations. So we're going to go over that in a minute. But before we do that, we're going to do wins. Okay. And yeah, since we'll, I will start, we'll, since we were just talking happen. about my Thrive article. So I recently got uh, submitted. Yeah. We did a workshop in the Colin community uh, in July about yeah. how to be more visible yeah. in the world. And I wanted to share um, that I got approved in that for the article submission for the Thrive Global uh, for five things that female founders should know, kind of an article. And so I'm writing that up and Joanne and Kathy from Joanne's community was helping me um, with some copy and like copy editing and um, just rewording things. And I got some feedback that was positive just now from everyone. So thank you so much. Who wants to go next with a win? I'll, 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 I'll go ahead. Yeah. I'll I don't necessarily have a win, but but I guess you would say this is a win. I'm just getting a little bit more clarity around uh, my direction, and I'm going to be making a bit of a pivot pivot and kind of pulling back on the community uh, for right now because I have I'm spread too thin, and I have um, some other priorities that I and passions that I really need to pursue right now, and so that's in the guided meditation space and the um, um, getting through the hypnotherapy courses uh, that I've been taking so that I can start incorporating uh, more into that and um, creating um, programs that will help heal people from trauma. It's good to identify like, I love that. It's okay. It's a okay. Because you're just really wanting to make it a like, I just took the six month break really was more than that, a really long break before I really decided what to do with Fencom here. So um, yeah, that's a really great win in itself of just acknowledging like, I just need to pause because I really want to get clear on direction. So, and I forgot to mention too, Eileen, who is in Joanne's community is a hypnotherapist, I believe, right, Joanne? I believe she is. Oh, you might've froze or I froze. Anyhow, so we might yeah, have to connect you too. She is a hypnotherapist, yeah. She also just just took she just became certified. Oh wow! Yeah, well, she um, she may be someone to um, chat with. I I I still need to uh, contact uh, Marisala. Um, you had um, um, given me her her contact details, so I still need to do that, Deb. But um, that's okay. She's traveling this week, and she was feeling good. really sick because we were supposed to talk oh. this week and we rescheduled to next week. So you've got okay. more time. Yes. You have as much time as you need to do whatever yes. you need to do. Yes. And I know that our very Ani here in our community, she you're trained as a hypnotherapist, aren't you, Ani? Oh, no. Oh, I no. thought you were. I've done, okay. uh, with, um, I'm trained in um, like a master practitioner in neuro-linguistic programming. Oh, okay. All right. And NLP. hypnotherapy was part of it, but I would never do it or say anything now. Okay. Well, NLP is also on my agenda as well. So to get certified. It's a in must. And if you're ever ready to do, I'll be happy to, um, I can find out when is like in your area or if you find one in your okay. area. Um, this doctor, he's amazing. He's a PhD psychologist, but he grew up with the creators of NLP. So he knows inside and out. Oh, and wow. He the psychiatry in there. He brings, he's also traditionally, um, like he teaches Huna, which is a Hawaiian um, ancient healing modality because his family was granted the, to teach from the Hawaiian elders to teach their healing, like Huna, their healing modalities. And um, I can get you a um, discount okay. and their first training, like 50%, I think, discount in their first training. Sounds great. Thank yeah. you. Okay, Ani, your win? 
Okay, so let's say my win is, um, oh, I actually uh, figured out how to create on my member vault a platform to put a product, my genetic testing, because I couldn't figure out how to do this. So people can place an order for the test kit and analysis and pay all in one place. So I didn't have to break it up. Like, oh, you buy the test now, you pay the company, and then you buy, you pay me for the analysis. It's like, no, just combine it. Let me charge one price. So I set it up on a member vault and I hit my first sale. So that was exciting. That's a oh. win. <laughs> Congrats. Yes. Exciting. And I apologize. I just want to say I'm expecting a really important phone call. So if I get it, I'll just excuse myself for a moment. Cool. So a win I've had lately is uh, increased collaboration. That's one of my stated values for my for my community. And so I, one of the ways I collaborate is I bring authors together and they collaborate with each other and and I've been seeing fun things happening in the mighty network as well as on the zoom calls we have and then uh, another is partnering with other professionals in the publishing and marketing space so I've got one woman coming back to teach a course for a second time and I've got a couple of other people that I'm talking with about maybe doing some uh, courses or, or coaching within our space or, or so, so I'm really excited about some of the partnerships that are developing around the space and I'm migrating my Facebook group in the next, I'm, I'm closing it down in the next week or so and migrating it into my mighty network, which I feel excited and nervous about all at the same time. That's awesome. I'm sure it'll go great. Great. Yeah, it's just great wins, everybody. Um, so speaking of writing, um, I, I submitted my first, um, you know, chap small chapters. Um, I am writing a book about traveling and transformation. And I have an editor and I said, I told him that it would help me if I um, had a deadline where uh, every Tuesday I have to submit something and then every Friday we meet and talk about it. And so this is the first Friday that we're actually meeting and talking about it. And I submitted on Tuesday. So I hit my own deadline and I feel really excited about that. Yay. It's so exciting. I'm so excited yeah, for you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we've done wins and now we're going to go uh, to, I'm going to show you guys the column guide. I put this together this week. Um, this is section two of the column guide. So you can find it over in the resources section. I did put a um, PDF of the slide deck in our Muddy Masterminds cohort group. And okay. And then I was getting a call, sorry. <laughs> um, so Section two is going to cover um, about conversation, collaboration, how to get your members talking more. This is one of the biggest things that comes up with people who have already launched a community, um, but or have done a course, and then they're seeing some lag or not not as much activity um, through the course or after. And then the steps that I'm going to have uh, that we're going to go over here today. Step one, um, talking about community gardens. Step two is going to be talking about the engagement framework. Uh, step three is going to be talking about uh, ideas for um, uh, live events and social events. Step four is creating belonging and how we look at those P's uh, to create belonging. And then step five is reviewing the commitment curve and community life cycle. So the step one is what we'll do first. If you guys have questions, just let me know. Um, there are some worksheets here too that you could um, download. So a community garden is described as an online community that is creating content and supporting each other and building it together. Um, cultivating it, the, the best example I have for you is this community because over the last few months since I did the relaunch in May, all this, this guide and all of the content that's been created has kind of been a collaboration between the members of Fincom here. I didn't like put it up there necessarily 
And then this is it. I basically have been asking throughout the process of before I put it together during and after um, for member feedback to um, identify areas of improvement, missing components, um, and reinforcing um, something that's worthy of your time to consume as members of the Fine Commerce community. So that's um, cultivating community content. So just Again, we want to um, try, and I'm working on this with you, <laughs> to have members be more proactive, but it uh, takes time. And so we'll go over the commitment curve a little bit later. But this is one of the things I think that makes it the concept of community garden really interesting is instead of creating all the content as a host, we can work with communities, members to co-create content. Um, as community builders, we all have ways to contribute. So growing our shared wisdom and expertise with each other inside the community um, brings uh, improves the overall um, content in the communities that we lead. And um, so I'm hopeful that we focus on continuing that in this community, as well as hopefully the things that we go over today will help you in growing your community overall. And then just looking at what we talked about in the onboarding process, sprouting processes for efficiency. So talking about creating that onboarding plan or improving it along the way as things go, or if you're doing a restructure, I'm working on a restructure with the client. And so we are now looking at, okay, how can we be more proactive or efficient in what we're doing as a community manager? Because I'm going to be taking on a role as a community manager later with this community. And then how can we... Um, have our incorporate the members in that process. Uh, and that's more about asking questions. There's a worksheet here that I put together that just goes over the basics of what you like. What, what do you, how do you participate in other communities? What content could you co-create with your members? Um, who could you work with inside your community to get feedback and suggestions? Um, who's a rising star or community super fan? You, that, can, that you can identify um, these individuals and ask them to host or lead events. Maybe those are some ideas that we're gonna go over in a little bit. What's your process for creating content, onboarding members and encouraging participation? So it's just like kind of reviewing all of those areas. And then having that concept of it being, how can I engage my members to be part of the process of building this space and how can I connect with them better to see if they even want to participate. So that's step one. Does anybody have questions about what I just talked about with community, for reference to community gardens? Good. Okay, there are some resources there too, and there's some links for you guys to, um, to check out. Okay, step two. I have a mundane question. How do you get that beautiful view? Beautiful love view. I love how I love how the um, the the course outline is down the side. Yeah, you just like mean it's what... the little expanded thing. So when you come into a course, mm -hmm. that's a good question. When you come into the course, I always expand things to make them bigger so you can see the content a little bit easier. Yeah. So when you're in this, you just click on the overview, and then as you're going through it, that little arrow, yeah. the arrows that point together expand to make that view. Oh, that was worth the price of admission today. Thank you. And if you have your sections all turned on, people can also do that with navigating through the whole course. So I have all the sections viewable. You don't have to complete one section to get to the other. So um, they can toggle between them. And I see something you, in the chat. If you have it set for, um, they have to finish one lesson before they can move on to the other, then are they, are they able to click on ed lessons further along or do they have to go? It would be them? hidden. It would be grayed out until they get, until they would get to it. Oh, until they, out. I see. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Um, yeah, of course. So step two is about creating a safe space. We talked a bunch about this in um, some other calls that we've had recently in the book club, as well as in our onboarding. But I'll go over this and I'm pulling some content and some resources from other places who've really got a great outline. Um, this is called the Community Engagement Framework. And it talks about um, validation, uh, sharing, asking, 
and answering and exploring. And it just goes through all of these different stages that members, like they find out about, you know, they somehow find out about your community. They maybe view the landing page um, or if it's a social media, you know, channel, then they might be liking one of your posts. So that's like just, they're validating, they're interested in your content, but they're not quite on the bandwagon yet. Um, and then maybe there's another step where they're then, then they're sharing ideas or collaborating once they join, um, asking, you know, asking questions um, and then exploring as well as seeing other resources. So those are the steps with the community engagement framework. There's a link here that you can go over that and it goes over much more detail as well as a, I have a link here to the podcast that we just recently did with Karen East, who's a good friend of mine. And she talks all about how to create a safe space in uh, either an online community or an in-person community. And she was the first, <laughs> she was one of the founding members of the Find Calm Here community when it was an actual in-person event. And so she hosted the first Find Calm Here event, which was not even titled that at the time, but it happened back in um, November of 2019. And we had a four hour, five hour workshop where we did, uh, had somebody do it essential oils, but Karen led the meditation and yoga session. So she was able to create this like super calming space for people. And that's why I brought her on the podcast to talk about that. We talked a little bit in our onboarding session um, in section one about these different onboarding. Um, maybe you want to look at doing a concierge to create a safe space for people, depending on the topics of your community. Maybe there's more, you know, involvement that you want to get in, you know, with your community members as far as collaborating with them or maybe connecting them during a live call. We talked a little bit about breakout rooms when you're doing like a first welcome session or something like that, an onboarding call to connect them. And then I have a FAQ example here of like start here for a roadmap to help make it just easier for members to know uh, where to go to find different resources. And so I don't know if everybody saw that from the last session. I don't even know if I had it finished at the last session, but I have like a checklist here. And then there's some examples of like, where do I start? And then here's a link to the welcome post. Um, I need help with saying my my network. Yep, I put a launch guide together for that. Do you offer one-on-one -on -one support? Yep, you can email me there. These are just like general questions. I have, you know, little recordings are available. Um, and then I'd love to have you on the podcast if you want to schedule an interview. Like those are things that I put in the FAQ post for Find Calm here. The, if to create a safe space, you could e even go further and include terms and conditions in that area of everything we say in this space is private. Um, just reiterating that, you know, whatever the language makes sense for your community, like there's no dumb question and things like that, just to make sure that people understand that it is a safe space. So those are ways you can communicate. There's some examples, like I said, there of the community engagement framework that you can look over that it, there's a video and it goes a lot more in detail in, in regards to how to create this. This is a little bit more framed towards a company. So just so you know that it really is based on like a company and not a individual leading a community. So there are some like language things in there that are a little different. Um, so step three, uh, getting social and making it fun, just like we have these uh, fun chat events in our community. And I want to do, we had some AMAs, we had like a, a happy hour once a while ago. And here I give a bunch of ideas about how to get your members talking. Um, in the first um, area with the onboarding and then the launch guide I put together, I talked about a soft launch and Mel well, mentioned about a welcome onboarding session and like how you could do a welcome party, maybe to connect the members and those things. Um, so that's one, but then there's a lot of other, there's a lot of other ideas here. So an ask me anything would be one that you could either do based on the content of the course, if you're doing a course, or it could be just a general ask me anything about the topic, a specific topic, maybe you have a monthly topic and ask me anything about a specific topic. Or, or there's a lot of other ways you could like maybe promote these AMAs. The um, virtual and social events and happy hours, they're really fun. And I've been in communities where overall you want to be in a community that you want to hang out in too, right? So 
I find it really fun to do some happy hours when, especially during COVID, when things were shut down and we were like locked all inside. <laughs> um, some of us might still be, but the ability to like chat with people and have a glass of wine or play a game or do yoga or have just a group guided meditation, those kinds of things were really fun. Um, and they connect you with your members as well as allow members to connect with themselves in a fun interactive way instead of like a uh, you know here's what we have to do and or something boring like here let's talk about content um stuff like that the virtual co-working i know works really well for um communities that have some kind of accountability component with it so if you have like, for example, we could do one in our community for community building. So what's a community building task that you've been putting off for a while? Um, maybe that's the one thing that you say, OK, I'm going to do that during Deb's, Deb's uh, co-working call. And it's just uh, a Zoom call that you all jump on and you say, hey, I'm going to this is my plan for today. For the next 20 minutes, I'm going to do this, write my founding article for Thrive or whatever the, the assignment is that I've been putting off. And then I'm going to come back in 20 minutes. We, we all go and do our little task. We come back in 20, 25 minutes. And then we say how it went. Like, how's it going? Did you knock out that article? Yep. No, I'm still working on it, whatever the situation is. Um, but those are just fun ways to maybe get a task done and be able to connect with people. Because I know especially we're all sitting in our little homes, apartments, wherever. And sometimes we don't have that interaction. It's nice to just break up the day with a little bit of connection while you're actually being productive. You can hit those two. I feel like that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, and then there's coffee chat, coffee chats and text chats. So uh, Muddy Networks does have an option for creating a text chat and explains a little bit about what that is. So I have a, an article that links to the Muddy Network, how to create a text chat event. I've seen this work in some communities. Um, it depends on your audience and who your members are. So really what depend if this makes sense for you or not. You just have to like see if that's something you'd want to do. I like the coffee chat just because it's kind of like, let's just chat. A lot of people that are entrepreneurs might want to network, but they don't want to necessarily call it network. If we could call it, you know, let's chat over coffee. And that could be anything from our personal life that we share to our business life and all in between, because that's all the stages, that's all the colors of the rainbow, <laughs> as, as they would say that life has. Uh, I have a whole lot of resources here about driving engagement with AMAs, virtual events, ideas, co-working ideas, and um, that article with Money Networks. Those are a bunch of resources. I do have, I put together a worksheet um, for this section that just lists over, goes over these questions, like what, what events do you in enjoy? Do you like informational workshops? Do you have time in your day to attend workshops or happy hours? Is it something that you actively do? And what, if not, why not? Those kinds of things. So you guys can check out that later. I'm going to kind of zoom through this because I want to make sure I have time for comments, questions, all that good stuff. Um, so there's a whole bunch of event ideas. I asked you like at the bottom here to share any events that you've got happening that are really um, seeming to go well in your community. So if you have any thoughts or ideas on events that you've seen really work well for other communities or yours, just let us know. That would be a great um, place for you to share some tools and tips of things you've learned. And then um, step four is talking about creating belonging with these seven Ps. And this is uh, a CMX David Spinks framework. So I have the link to his framework there, the seven Ps. We kind of went over this a little bit in some of the onboarding, but it just taught, and in the launch guide too, but it talks a lot about, you know, the purpose, what's your goal in bringing people together? Who are you bringing together? Where are you bringing them together? Like, how are they participating? Um, policy, you know, setting rules and guidelines, terms and conditions, things like that. Promotion, how you're getting the word out about the community. And then how is it going overall, like through 30, 60 and 90 day reviews? So there's a worksheet that I put together, um, but I kind of customized the piece for us as entrepreneurs and Muddy Network community builders. Um, to look at it in a different light, per se. So um, if you look at that worksheet, it goes into a little bit more detail that's related to you as an entrepreneur who's building an online community versus a business, which is kind of what David Spinks' um, whole thing is about. 
So that is another, just a short note with a worksheet for you. I try to keep this stuff short and sweet so it's not too overwhelming. And then step five is just reviewing the commitment curve in the life cycle. We talked a little bit about this as well um, in, I think it was our book club meetup, but having a vision for your community is really great, but <laughs> sometimes they don't know or understand or can't participate in all of those areas of your vision. Um, so I kind of put like what I think a community building entrepreneur sees, um, you know, you invite someone to your paid on online community. Actually, no, let me step back. You do a discovery call or an ideal member interview, right? You identify, this is my vision. This is what I'm doing. The person says, you know, oh, this sounds interesting. You share it with them. Uh, you, they validate by joining your community. Then you invite them in small steps to participate, you know, with, and contribute with the purpose post and the welcome posts. And then you ask them to share their challenges. And then you ask them about support and feedback to others. So <laughs> what I think a member perspective might be, could be, is I'm interested in your community and I'd like to learn more. The next step is during my week, I'll make time to visit your online community. That's me as a member saying, I really love Carol's community. I really wanna make time for this because I'm really interested in the topics of her community. I wish I had more time to dedicate to this community. Super true for me <laughs> with a lot of communities I'm in. Um, unless it's, and then another thought is, well, now I'm overwhelmed and stressed as an entrepreneur. So unless I, this community is helping me with one of my big top priorities, I don't know that I have time for this. So that might be a step back. So I might have been really excited to join, but then I'm like, life gets in the way kind of a thing. And then I'm kind of like, I know I wanna go there, but is it really a priority for me right now? And then I wanna be more active in your community. How do I make this community my priority? So now I'm asking for help. I'm like, oh man, I really wanna make this a priority because it's super important to me. The topics are like really relevant to me, but I just need to figure out how to make a time in my day for this space. So that might be them asking me for help of like, how do I make time for this? And that could just be the answer to that as a host could just be whatever time you have is great. If you have five minutes or if you have five hours, it doesn't matter or any time in between um, to pop in and just say hello or just read a, read an article or a post. That's fine. Um, where did I? I lost my place now. And then it just changes um, after that, maybe I could be supportive towards others and share what's really challenging me now. So now I'm like, okay, I'm making this a priority. Here's what I'm struggling with. Um, then maybe a bunch of weeks or months later, um, now I'm making it a priority. I really love this community and I'd love to support you in any way I can as a super fan. So those are two different perspectives of like how I see like this, this different host versus member perspective could be. These are just, again, thoughts of mine. But it's good to consider all the different, and there's, we could put this in 17 different ways too, right? We could say, oh, there's somebody that's like jumping in. There's the, pe the person that's like jumping in and doing all the checklists or doing all the worksheets and is super excited and inviting people. And then there's the other person on the opposite end of the spectrum that really wants to participate, but doesn't make it a priority and comes in once and then never comes back. And then there's people all in between. So just identifying your members and the worksheet that I give you is to help you kind of identify in each stage of where these people are at. So um, new members. So when was this new member invited and where are they in this stage or what are they doing in these different variety of stages and maybe reviewing like, okay, this member has been in for a while. Maybe that person started three months ago. Um, so they got in the community three months ago, but then they didn't start participating or joining in or commenting until 30 days ago or till like the last two weeks, maybe. So they were in the community for three months, but then they only started contributing. And you can look at analytics in the analytics sections of a money networks, or just looking at content and comments and posts to see, well, they joined in September, but they haven't even mentioned any, anything until October. So that it took them that long to maybe come back, whether that's whatever that means um, for you and them. And then just like looking at the different areas of engaged members and then um, ideas for improvement, like, okay, do you have a content strategy? 
Um, have you validated that with your members? Do you plan to have content daily, weekly, monthly, or quarterly? Does this align with what your members say is helpful? So just again, validating like before you're creating all of this content. And honestly, like in the beginning, we have to create a lot of content, but we, our goal and hope is that the members start creating their own content. And so maybe leaving a space for that too is, and asking those questions, is it in alignment with like what my members want and what would be helpful? And then I have a whole bunch of resources of links here about um, this community like identity cycle and commitment curve. So with that, that is section two. I did that like super fast. <laughs> um, so let me know if there's an area of focus that we wanted to talk about maybe, or if there's a question. Not, don't all jump at once. Mm -hmm. It's so detailed. You really it put a lot in it. That's it's a really question. good. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, John. Sorry. Oh, no, I was just saying that it was so detailed and, and just really comprehensive and like so many, so much for new hosts to check out. Is it too much? <laughs> I tried to break it down into, that's why it's in like different section. So, I, oh, I, never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, I was just going to ask, maybe I missed it, but was there like a specific, like you mentioned that there are some people going to be just jumping, bot feeding and going through everything. And then some, they're just going to whatever, do the most basic. And then in between, was there a simple clarified section that says, Okay, jump in and this is your checklist. Make sure you know you've covered everything or for them as yeah. members as a like a checklist for a host. As, yes. Well, sorry, I'm not understanding the question. Let me so just So, let's say I sign up um, become a member in your in your community. Mm -hmm. And I'm type of person, I just want to like jump in, like you said, fill everything out and then be like an active part of it. Or I just, just going to like tippy toe. Was there a clear thing of, okay, to jump in and this is your checklist, make sure you cover all this. Yeah. So in the, um, I have it in the, I think it's in step, is it step two? For step three, you know how in uh, I remember uh, when you first start creating your um, mighty networks, there is like a checklist you download and then you go through it. Make sure you set up everything. Yeah, and it's that um, the FAQ. The FAQ would be an example of how you could point people to where to start, if that's what you're saying, or like a a roadmap. Yes. For people who um, are more active is what you're saying. So yes. that would be the FAQ post of, okay. you know, start here. If you're, you know, basically you could just put a question answer section. And so those people would know exactly where to go and you could have it hyperlinked so that the, that you could just click on it and then it would take exactly. them right to the section that's, of the that's community. That's exactly what I meant. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. The FAQ. Um, Pauline. It's going to be a, um, bundled with, so you, you buy a membership, but you can go directly into this course. Oh, for me, yes. for fine. Come here. Yeah, how are people, how, are, like, is this, is this a, a kind of a, a lead magnet for, for some people? You know what I mean? So the guide itself, are you asking, or are you asking about the content in the section that I went over? The guide itself, how are, how are you getting like is this developmental and you're kind of working through it with us to develop it right now or are you showing us this is what it is and you're ready to launch it so based on and I don't know if you, maybe you weren't in some of these conversations it might have been a while ago that we had talked about it but in um I don't remember what calls it was if it was money mastermind or what whatnot but a couple of months ago when I started launching and talking with people in some of our workshops and sessions 
I had feedback from people that it would be helpful to have a roadmap or a guide of where to start in the community building process. And so part of that was to create these guides. And so the first launch guide I put together, I did a workshop on, and it was basically what I said in the beginning about a community garden. It's really just that concept of um, co-creating this content. But yeah, eventually once I get them all finished, my thought process is around a digital product that I'll have like so that people could join um, the Find Calm Here community and then get these guides so that then they would be able to hopefully streamline their community building process wherever they are in the stage. There would be some kind of resource or tool that would help them with ease and bringing calm to uh, helping that process. So they could be bundled on your landing page so that when people join the community, they're automatically in these in these right programs. and then they'll go on my website as 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 digital products too like it'll be able to right. they could buy it from the website but this is stuff I wanted to do but I wasn't going to do it until like November or December but then I just I pushed everything up because of just comments from everyone um my thought process is yeah I wanted to get feedback to see if I'm on the right path with what I'm doing as far as helping people in community building and then, uh, you know, getting validation from, from you and other members of the community who take the guides and, and go in there and use the resources that I'm putting together. And then telling me if it's really helpful, like uh, Samir, I know he hasn't been on calls recently, but he went through the whole launch guide and he put up all of his launch plans and his pricing and everything on the notes there. And it sounds like from what I'm getting from him is that that launch guide helped him put together his entire launch plan, which is the go- which was the hope and <laughs> the intention in creating that launch guide. Um, so the, that's the that's the overall hope. And I thought it would be really nice to for me because I was thinking to build all of this by myself and in a short period of time. But what I'm now realizing, it's much better and beneficial for myself and others to break this up into sections and then to talk with you about these topics to get feedback from you on what else would be helpful in each section. So the next section um, that we'll do for September is gonna be about cultivating growth for your money network. So then that's gonna talk about ambassador programs because that was something that people asked me about how to create ambassador programs and Um, benchmarking with milestones of, you know, different um, ways to set goals, like little goals along the way of like, you know, specific number of members that you want to have join or different um, courses that you want to launch. And one of the clients I talked to yesterday mentioned about, it's really hard for her, and this might relate to some people, it's really hard for her to see like the big vision. And she gets stuck in all this, there's so much to do. And it's hard to plot it out. And so I'm talking to her about planning, doing a planning session of where we just look at all of the ideas and things that she wants this place to be and kind of putting it on a, like a, a big line and then just putting dates along and saying, okay, this is phase one, this is phase two, this is phase three. So we're not worrying about anything in phase two or three right now, we're just working on the phase one, whatever that means for us. Um, that seems to really help myself and others. And so that's what this guide is kind of doing is breaking up things that I'm working with clients on and breaking it up into sections and then giving tools to people as far as the worksheets and that to get them moving in the right direction. Sorry, that was long-winded answer. That's good. Thank you. Yep. I, I thought I would just comment. I mean, I, I think this is excellent. I mean, I, I, you know, I think this is more than anyone would really even expect at this point, given um, how quickly you have moved to rally and, and get things going um, and shifting your, your focus. Um, so I, I think this is great. And over time, it's going to, um, it's, it's going to adapt and you're going to get more feedback and you're going to get more um, input from people. Um, I think you've done a phenomenal job. Uh, is, 
Is there any takeaways that you had, Carol, or anyone else had a specific uh, section that they found that was maybe something new or an idea or concept that was spe specifically helpful? Uh, you know, I a lot of this I have I have read or heard before or even seen, but pulling it all together, um, you, you know. Um, and just the different terminology has really helped to kind of put it in perspective, if that, uh, if that makes sense. And then there's some things that I hadn't even thought about um, that I think um, are, are extremely useful. Um, you know, like for instance, just the, you know, um, turning networking into coffee chats. You know, it's just a different spin, how you approach something how you, you use certain language that, um, and that's really what it is, is updating our language. So it's more friendly, mm -hmm. it's more community focused, it's more um, helping one another, sharing, learning, growing. Um, and so if that, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah. yeah. That was the goal too of wanting, to talk about how we want to feel. How do we want to feel as hosts in our community? And how do we want our members to feel? Because ultimately, when we're talking about things like how to connect our members and spark conversation, we want to have sparked conversations just as much as we want our members to. And sometimes I feel like it's a push, like it's it's it feels like a heavy, hard thing. And what I hope to do in, in this and that's specifically why I made step three, like get social, make it fun, like highlighting that because community building can feel stressful and overwhelming for a host. That's primarily 99% of the clients that I work with feel that way. And to make it fun for you and what do you, and just looking at those things, because I think we get so, at least for me, I get so in my head about like all the things that I feel like are going to be helpful or I think that I need to do. And it, before I launch something or open anything up and recognizing that, is this really something I want to do? And I just had a client say that too. She's like, oh, you're asking me as well about what I like and what I want my life to look like. And what I like when you're talking about as a host as and building a community, and that's an additional revenue stream, but it's also a time, a time thing. So do you have time in your day, but do you also want to do this? Is I mean, sometimes people like, you know, figure out the community thing isn't for them, maybe later, but not right now. So all of those ways are just like to say, yeah, let's make it fun and interactive. And then you get that. And it's a progression too, because as you're creating the, so step one about creating, cultivating a garden, that's like the beginning of like, before you see the rewards of like all of this heart that you get to harvest. Um, and it's just starting that garden and then creating a safe space allows the growth if you want to keep with the, with the gardening analogy, allows the growth of these, um, these community spaces and then making it social is like the sunshine of like, now I'm just really going into the analogy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Belonging is now the flowers, the flowers of the community feel like they all belong. And then, you know, reviewing like the harvest of like, okay, how'd it go? Not all the maybe crops are like working out the way you thought they were for, you know, maybe your content isn't working the way you thought it was going to work three months ago, but now you can say, Oh, well, this is the feedback I got. And here's what I'm learning. So that was well, kind think, of my progress. Yeah. I was going to say, I think this is a great resource. It doesn't have to be, everything doesn't have to be a hard and fast rule for people. You take what you need, you, you read in, you, you, you take a look at it and you read, okay, what's, what can I really uh, leverage right now that maybe I'm not doing doing as well, or that really fits uh, more of my personality and my style and how I want to uh, approach this as well. So it gives people um, a perspective on that and gives them some insights on how to approach things. But it's not like everything cast in concrete. It's 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 a a bit of a it's a blueprint that people can can go to and take a look at what's going to work for them and, right. and, and, and test some things, test some things. Yeah. And I, I, I just wanted to add like with your, um, 
you know, the different, the different sessions that people could have, whether it's co-working or ask me anything or, you know, all those different ones, it's, it's like, they don't have to do it all, right? They have to just choose what's best for their personality. Like why, why set up something that you're dreading? Like, oh, I don't really want to do it. Ask me anything, but it's like, oh, I really would like to do the club chat. That sounds like fun or it's a wine chat or it is, but like giving them, like, I like how you broke down what each one kind of is and then they could see if it, you know, what fits their personality. Yep. And what they like, yeah, what the host likes to do, because I feel like if we're not going to like it, then we're, that energy is going to come out in however we present the event. I, I was in an event yesterday and it was kind of awkward in the beginning because she was just, yeah, it was just a little, she wasn't super, ex- like she was trying to, it, feel, it felt like she was trying to pretend that she was excited. She's like <laughs> had music going and she's like, hey, Deb, and in the chat, you know, mm. but at the, it, and it, then it, it became a, a natural conversation later, but in the beginning it was a little funky. And I think that's just because it's a, it's that like initial I'm not, you know, maybe, she, maybe she loves doing that, but it just didn't, that didn't come up in the beginning. It came up like later that, and then she wanted to connect. And then I got an email from her and then she's like, you know, now I'm in her sales funnel, whatever. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe that's something I, I think you have it in there somewhere, but really to hit home, like, you know, um, don't, don't overwhelm your members, you know, because it's like, I learned that for my, myself, I was like, we have this on Monday, and this on Wednesday, and this on Friday, and and, the, and then people were coming to me going, I gotta leave, because it's just too much, it's too much stuff, you know, yeah, and I was like, no, wait, I, I didn't mean to overwhelm you, and then I realized I need to pull back and be like, not every Monday, but like every other Monday. So, Mm -hmm. you know, like not to over, I I think we we do that because we want to over give and we want to think we have to add so much, you know, so. The industry teaches, the industry teaches us too, with all of these other instructional courses on how to build community or these live, you know, tribe and all these other places that are in Gina even is like telling us we have to create a, you know, all of these things. And I just joined a community because somebody referred to me a community and I joined and immediately I got like two emails in one day. Then I got two more emails in the next day. Then I got another email and then I got, and I'm like, I didn't even get to your first email because I've got other things happening in my life. Like I can't just sit and read every email you've got, even if it's really, like really great and it could be helpful to me. So yeah, less is more. I'm working on that with a client um, that I'm working with around. They have a lot of things happening in their community and it's like, how could you streamline and lessen it so that people can navigate easier. And I feel like that even with Find Calm here is I'm really trying to balance of what I'm doing because I'm working with community builders who all have their own communities and they're probably in a couple of communities. So I don't want to overwhelm you because the whole point is to find calm. So anyway, thanks for that point. Great point, Joanne. And even if there is a lot going on, part of it is education to help people understand they don't have to try and do everything. And and especially helping them know how to adjust their notifications when they first join the community. I think those two pieces that the adjustment of notifications and the permission not to do everything are are two very important things. Because a big, big community might have a lot going on, not because of the host, but because of the other members. Right. And, and even there, you have to know you, you can't try and keep up with everybody. I, you know, it's really funny. I wanted to talk about notifications. I wanted to create a video, which I will. I changed to daily digest with every community I'm in. And it's so much better now oh, yeah. because I was un, I was basically turning off email updates on like everything. And then I'm like, well, why is that a good thing? Because then I'm like, <laughs> I'm in the community that I want to bring people back to. So I changed it to the daily digest, which actually Ani had mentioned about me to me. And I hadn't really gone into my own notifications for a while to look. And I really like that option better. So I don't know if anybody's found that as a helpful um, tool, but I think I wanted to make sure I highlight that to clients to, to recommend to their members to do the daily digest. Cause then it's just one email, but it, it sums up whatever is going on in the community. 
Exactly. And that way you can actually see all like whatever comments, whatever, if there's something specific, you just go directly to that. Right. Instead of seeing everything. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I want to thank you all for spending an hour with me of your time. I appreciate everybody. Um, and I do have a call at one o'clock with a client, potential client, hopefully an author that hopefully I'll be working with for the next few months. And until the next time, if you could let me know in the community um, what you're working on, I'd like to start doing a little goal setting. There's that live journal that we've got happening. And so if you want to share it there or anywhere else, um, but what are you, what, where are you at with community building? Like what's your, what's your next 30 days look like? Is there something that you're trying to do, whether it's launch a new course, whether it's build a new section out, whether it's, you know, do some member interviews to get more validation before you create some content, anything like that, just let me know. And if you find those worksheets helpful, if anybody goes into this guide now and downloads the worksheets and does them, please let me know um, if you find it helpful and what you kind of discovered if you use those. Sounds cool. good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yes. you so much. Yeah. And then, and then next, Bye, next month we'll be talking about the, um, ambassador program and i'm going to pull some research together as well for that uh the last section in this calm guide for onboarding and then um we'll talk uh, about continuing i think what we'll do is we'll we'll go into the tech integration guide or something else depending on what topics y'all i'll put a poll up for the october session to see what everybody wants to talk about in october because we could do a couple different things we could either do a, a topic focus Colleen never never did, and I don't know if this is interesting to you, I'm putting you on the spot, but you've never done a growth seat. And so oh, if you're no. interested in doing a growth seat, we could do that for you if you wanted to do that in like October. Um, that just involves you presenting your community to us and then sharing whatever challenges or if you're doing a new launch, getting feedback. Okay. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Okay, we can talk I'll about it. And it chat more. Have a great weekend, everybody. I'll talk with you again soon. Take care, Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.